Hey, good morning, friends. Oh, happy, uh, happy Sunday. It's good to be here with you all this morning. I, I, uh, I'm real excited about today. Uh, today, I've got a good friend of mine with us. Uh, so this is, I'd like to introduce you to Jared Hunter. Everybody give Jared some love, some epic love. That's right. Now, when I'm not with you on Sundays, a lot of times I'm with him down in uh, Port Charlotte, Florida at his church. And so uh, he's, he's part of a, a great church called New Day Christian Church. And, and I, I tell you, this is our first time having the opportunity to lead together. And so we're both pretty stoked about it. Uh, so, and also last week, thank you guys for coming out. Those of you that came out to, to help us celebrate Epic's 10 year birthday. We had such a good time out at the, at, at the, the fairground together and uh, and we thought you know we're having so much fun we thought we would just kind of keep that going so today is part two so to, uh, Trent's gonna be out in just a little while he's gonna be sharing with us uh, part two of uh, the celebration our 10 year celebration um, but before we get to that we're gonna sing some songs together and so we'd like to invite you to please stand with us and join us Lord we thank you so much for today I thank you for this family for these friends that have gathered today to worship you to sing to you, sing praises to your name. So Lord, hear us as we as we sing to you today. In Jesus' name.
So on my drive up here this morning, I live several hours south of here, I had the opportunity to kind of think over just how incredible it is that God's people congregate in so many places every Sunday. Like I've been at, at New Day for seven years and, and you kind of get caught up in that world and you see the same people and you start to think about the church in, in such a small way. And then you see all of you together today to worship God and praise his name. And it just fills my heart with joy to see God work in other places. And so we're gonna sing this next song just called Resurrecting. And it's that simple reminder that there is victory in Jesus, that he has conquered the grave, that he has become the one who stood in our place and buried our sin and shame in the grave to be remembered no more, amen. So let's lift our voices and let's sing to the risen King.
fear that held us now gives way to him who is our peace his final breath upon the cross is now alive in me your name is victory
if you would, take a moment, say hello to the person next to you. Tell them hello, give them a high five. <laughs>yeah yeah give it up for 3g saturday so that was uh back in april but uh well good morning welcome to epic my name is tim jones i'm one of the pastors on staff and we are so glad that you're here with us today as you can see as matt already said uh we are continuing to celebrate 10 years of being epic our birthday was last week and it was amazing uh services and also the event that last night uh or the night uh last sunday if you miss out on our service uh, you don't want to uh, miss what was said that morning. And so if you would, uh, check out our podcast or check out our brand new ability to watch it by video uh, because of our media team. Would you give it up to our new media team? Yeah. So uh, they recorded that, and then also we're going to be streaming live pretty soon here as well. Well, if you're a guest, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Uh, if you have any questions about who we are or what we do in the community, uh, please stop by our Connection Center as we would love to meet you, and we have a gift for you as well. Well, I've just got a couple announcements before we continue on with the rest of the service. Uh, as you saw from the video, that was 3G Saturday, and we are gearing up for 3G Sunday. How many of you are ready for that? Okay, three of you. Uh, so, but anyways, we are about to have 3G Sunday. And what started as an original vision when we started the church uh, took ground in 2013. And we are now doing two flagship events and then many other serving opportunities sprinkled throughout the year as well, uh, where we show our community that we are for them, uh, that God is for them, and that we are for Flagler. And so on October 20th, in a few weeks, we are going to gather together here on Sunday morning, uh, instead of having our normal services, we're going to go out in teams of 8 to 30, uh, and then we're going to give of our time and our abilities uh, doing various projects. We're going to do about 19 projects. There's 380 plus opportunities to volunteer. And so if you can paint, if you can do landscaping, if you can pick up trash, uh, work with uh, the elderly, children, or even horses, there's an opportunity to work at a cool uh, partnership that we have with uh, Whispering uh, Meadows out there. And so uh, on your seats, there is a sheet that says all of our different projects for this 3G Sunday. If you look over those projects, take that home, sign up today because those spots are going to go. Um, and so be looking at that and involve your small group, gather with people that you serve with and uh, sign up uh, to serve at one of those opportunities that's gonna be coming up in a couple weeks.
And then on your way in today, you saw uh, the signups for our new community groups that are about to begin in two weeks. So if you are not in a men's group, a women's group, or a couple's community group, uh, then jump on into one of these groups and get a taste of what it's like to be in one of our community groups. Uh, there's information on your seats about uh, what community groups are and what this experience that you're about to uh, be a part of is all about. And uh, be sure to sign up today with me uh, at the tables right on over there. And then finally, just want to say thank you so much to all of you who give on a regular basis of your time, your talents, and also your resources to lead people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, because you give, we can do things like 3G Sunday and 3G Saturday uh, that tells our community that we are for them. Uh, not too many people see the church actually doing something beyond the walls. And this is our opportunity to do that. And because you give on a regular basis, we're able to do those types of events. We're also able to provide people to jump into a community group as well uh, because we know how tough this world is. And so for to have a place where you can come to, be encouraged, prayed with, learn about God and encourage each other on, uh, that just doesn't happen without you guys. So thank you so much for how you give on a regular basis. And if you'd like to join with us in partnering financially, there's two ways that you can give. You can give through the giving boxes located at the end of each section uh, or online at the Epic Church. Com. Well, that's all that I have, and we just want you to sit back and enjoy the rest of the service. You're going to see a video that talks about uh, community groups and what that experience is like, and then we are in our final part of our series called Belong. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Epic. If you're new with us, my name is Trent. I'm one of the pastors on staff here, and I hope you will get connected in one of our community groups. We truly believe life is better in circles than in rows. And today I want to start by going back to last week and celebrate a little bit of what happened last Sunday as we celebrate, celebrated 10 years as a church. And we've got some pictures for uh, us to, to see together. So here's some folks or some people that were part of our, our celebration last Sunday afternoon at the fair. Grounds. We had an amazing time uh, together, and we're so grateful for the people that were there. I'm not sure. It seemed like there was about a thousand or more people that were a part of that. Just had an amazing experience together. So thank you for helping us to celebrate 10 years as a church. And I want to stop here on this one. This is me in the dunk booth here. And uh, Tim courageously joined uh, the dunk tank team. And then Cody Anderson, our youth director, did that as well. And if you didn't get a chance to dunk the three of us, you must have been the only one because I think everybody had an opportunity to do that and it just highlighted the fun that we were able to have as a church family together. Now, this morning, as Tim said, I'm going to transition. We're going to actually end our Belong series that we've been in and uh, we thought maybe we were ending it two weeks ago, but no, there were some other ideas that we thought that we would add to this series as well. And I'm going to come over here and, and start at this table and I want to ask, how many runners do we have in our group here? Like people who like to put your sneakers on and actually go out and run and sweat, maybe run in a 5k, maybe a half marathon, maybe a marathon. How many of you like actually do that? and enjoy that. Hold your hands up high. Don't like, don't be ashamed. The rest of us are looking at you with, you know, evil eyes. Like we wish we could be you, but we struggle uh, with, with that. So this table highlights a a part of my life where I actually trained for and ran a marathon. Now, let me just tell you, I hate running. Like, I don't like to run for any reason. I understand, you know, it's good for you. And I understand, you know, it moves your blood around your body and, you know, keeps your heart in shape. And like, I get all that. I just don't enjoy the process of it. It's not all that fun to me. But uh, about 11 years ago, a friend of mine challenged me to run a marathon. And you would have thought he would have started easy on me and challenged me to run a 5K or challenged me to walk a mile or something. But no, this friend who's a runner challenged me to run a marathon. And I'm like, not interested in that at all. He kept asking. And somewhere on the journey, I felt like God whispered something to me, that God whispered something like this, that there are a lot of things about the Christian life that you can learn if you'll train for and run a marathon. 
And so I decided I would do that. I began the process. It was a four month process for me to go from no running to running a marathon. And it was kind of excruciating. It was a grueling process. Then we got to race day and race day was exciting. There was some energy in the air. It was electric. It was just this buzz that was just fantastic. I loved the environment. And then the race began and we actually had to run. And so I began running and I had this strategy. If you're a real runner, if you're one of the ones who raised your hand, you will say, Trent, you're not a real runner. And I've already said that I don't like running. So like, I don't take any offense to that. So my running strategy was to run a mile and walk a minute, run a mile and walk a minute. My goal was to finish the marathon alive. Okay, so that was my strategy. And there were a bunch of people running the whole thing. And there was a few of us that were running and walking. So uh, I started that strategy. And as I was going in the strategy, the latter part of the race, I started to have this fond affection for the water stations. So I would see a water station up ahead and there would just be this excitement in me. And I think I would pick up my pace just a little bit because I just couldn't wait to get close to the water station. And what I decided to do at that point was when I get to a water station, that's when I'll walk a little bit. I'll walk for a minute, get, grab a cup of water and I will walk. And so it'd be a, a station like this, cups all over, filled with water. And I developed kind of this, uh, these conflicting emotions when I would come up to a water station. So I would come up excited and get my water, slow down a little bit, walk for a minute. And I would look back at the, the table and I would look back at the team that was at the table and I would be a little jealous. You know, here I am sweating, dying. Like, I'm not sure I'm gonna make it through this thing. I look back and the people at the water table, they're having fun. I mean, they're high-fiving each other, high-fiving racers coming through, handing out water, cheering people on. They're not sweating. They're smiling. They're like having a party at the table. And I was tempted to take off my race number and join the water team, be a part of the water station. Um, but here's the purpose of water stations and races. The purpose is so when runners come up, they can rehydrate and keep running in the race. Their purpose is not so racers will quit the race and join the team. Aren't you so glad I came and clarified that for you this morning? Now, here's the connection for us in the Christian world. Too many Christ followers have come to this conclusion that we need to quit the race of life and stay at Christian watering stations like church or a small group or a Christian circle of friends that we connect really well with. And then at some point in life, we start finding that we're spending less and less time fulfilling the mission God has for us to go out into the world and reach people for Jesus. And we're spending all of our time gathered together around our Christian watering stations, cheering each other on, high-fiving each other, having a whole lot of fun, but we're not actually doing what God has called us to do. And that's to go into the world. And you see this go concept all throughout scripture. So I want you to see some of the, the scriptures that highlight this. So God actually came and he told Abraham and Sarah to leave their home, leave their land, leave their family and go to a land that he would show them. God came to Moses and said, Moses, I want you to go back to Egypt. And Moses said, no, things didn't go well for me in Egypt. And God said, I want you to go back to Egypt and help free the Israelites from slavery. And then God said to Moses as well, he said to Moses, now I want you to lead them to the promised land. And God came to Joshua and said, Joshua, I want you to go in and help the Israelites conquer the promised land. And then God told Samuel to go and anoint David as the next king of the nation of Israel when Saul had turned away from God. And then God told Nathan, it's amazing, God had to tell Nathan to go confront David. When David had a moment of rebelling against God, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh and tell the Ninevites how they could find God. And God told Esther to go to the king so that the king would help uh, preserve the Israelites from extinction. God told Nehemiah to go to Jerusalem and rebuild the, the walls around that city. God told Joseph and Mary to go to Egypt to hide from King, or from king Herod. Yeah, sorry. 
had a moment where my brain went blank. King Herod that wanted to kill baby Jesus. And then he told him to go back to Nazareth after King Herod had died. And then Jesus comes along and he says, I want you to go. And he's talking to his followers. If you're a follower of Jesus, this is Jesus speaking to you today. And he says, listen, I want you to go into all the world and make disciples. He said that in Matthew 28. So that concept of going, of leaving comfortable places and going out into the world to reach people for Christ is found all throughout the Bible. That's part of what it means to belong in God's family. And again, that's what we've been talking about over the past six weeks. And we've been talking about this issue of God wanting us to accept each other, to love each other, to serve each other, to give to each other. Last week, we learned to celebrate each other, celebrate what God is doing in our lives. And today we're talking about going after other people. Last week, I told you that God has called us to go into our community and reach our community, as many people in our community for Christ. God has not called us to be a church for us for and no more. God has not called us to do that. He has called us to care about the, the people in our community who are dying, who are out there in their own races, and they don't see any water stations that they can come up to. And God has called us to kind of bring water to them, bring the living water to them so that they can have eternal life. So today I wanna highlight three ways that we can do that as a church. And this first way that we're gonna look at is actually a video of uh, a couple of people in our church family kind of telling their experience of coming into Epic and what that experience was like for them and then what they are doing in response to that. So let's take a look at this video together. I'm Adam, and this is my wife, my beautiful wife, Monique. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> We're the McIntyres. For, what, 20, 25 years, there was wandering that I'm trying to be a good person thing, and, but no real relationship with Jesus. Just, I just thought um, being a good person would be good enough to treat people well. We'd bounce around to churches. We'd look sometimes pretty seriously. And then we came to Epic. Epic was just enough to get me to go, I'll come back. For me, the real first pivot point was just one sermon on a Sunday. And it just, it, it gave me so much comfort right then and there in my seat. Hearing that sermon was like getting a good meal. Epic kept feeding me. So... <laughs> I kept coming back. <laughs> and then the kids program. That was another really big thing for us. Just to see just how loved they were and how they were learning and to hear them talk about Jesus and then to hear them start singing. We've pivoted from I'll come again to I'm gonna keep, I'm coming back. And I'm gonna look into this deeper. I'm gonna check out the small group thing. I'm gonna check out this, that, and the other. For me, the biggest change since coming into into Epic would be just really the discipline and getting into the Word. You're reading what's true and you're reading the promises that you're not alone and He's there for you. I know what Epic has done for me as far as filling me up. So I need to, I need to give some of that back. Because if I can help other people like I've been, like I've been served, then um, I think that's what it's all about. I love serving. I. I love leading things, I love helping people. Like I just, that's kind of how I'm wired. Seeing how worship really is, like what worship music does, how it opens people's hearts, how it allows them to praise God and that it's about that and being able to be a part of that for others with the gifts that we've been given by God musically. It's awesome when you look into the congregation, seeing that transformation, it's just like, wow, like look what God's doing and he's using us, like this is so cool. I'm learning that everybody has a story. Everybody has something. Sometimes it's so cool because we get to help those people connect and show them where God is in their life. You know? And when you have people that love you for who you are and just and what you do that are able to help you and guide you, I think that's so important. Like we just, we love the church family aspect. We love the, the lives that God is gonna help us to impact as well as the family and the lives of Epic that are gonna impact our family and our children. And that's why we love being all in.
You know, I love what Adam said there. Adam said, you know, we went from I'll come back to I'm coming back to now, like, we're going to give back. And they have put their words into action. Adam and Monique are very involved, our worship team. Um, they're involved in our, uh, our connections team as well. They, they helped with our 10-year party that we had last week. And they're just doing some amazing things with us. And we're so grateful for them and, and them deciding to dive in. There's so many of us as a church family that have made those decisions, not to just, uh, just come and sit on the sidelines, but to dive in at high levels and be active in helping people people meet Jesus. And so I invite you to follow their example and, and follow what Adam and Monique have been doing with their lives and find a place where you can get active in serving on a regular basis here at our, as our church family. You can find out more about that at our Connection Center. So if you'll just stop at our Connection Center before you leave, you could just say, hey, I'm interested in finding a place to serve and they would love to help you with that. And if you would like one of these cool new t-shirts that we have, don't you like our new shirts? Aren't they pretty cool? One of our own church family members designed them. You can get one for free if you join a, a serving team. They'll give you one. Sorry, shameless plug, <laughs> but it's true. All right, so another way that we can go after people for Christ is by adding more staff members. And this might sound a little bit weird, but church growth experts say that a full-time pastor can service about 100 people. We have two full-time pastors and we have about 700 people coming on a regular basis. And I'm not great with math, but if you divide that out, that's not close to 100 to one. Uh, so uh, we need more staff members. And we've got some amazing part-time staff members. We've got some amazing volunteers that help on a regular basis to bridge that gap. But I told you in June that we were hiring in the fall a new full-time pastoral staff member that's gonna come and help us in some big ways. And so I am grateful to finally introduce them to you. So would you help me welcome to the stage, Brian and Karen Baker. Thanks so good so morning, much. you guys. Good morning, good morning. Glad you're up here What's with up, us. What's up, Epic? How's everybody today? Good, good, good. So this is Brian and Karen, and I'm gonna start with Miss Karen over here. So Karen, tell us a little bit about the two of you. How long have you been married to this guy right here? And how many kids do you have? And what do you do okay, vocationally? Okay, so I am Karen Baker, and Brian and I have been married for 28 years, almost 29 years in November. Um, we have two boys, 23 and 26, and they have left the nest, so it's just us. Yes. yes. Um, they, so what's that like? Is that a fun thing? Uh, An empty nest thing? I'm curious, you know, like we're close. I'm just curious. It is, it out. is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. Um, but they do live in South Carolina, so that gives us a chance to, to get away sometimes. Um, and I teach at the high school. I teach a unit of Cambridge, Global Perspectives, and five units of intensive reading. So I go from the highest levels to the lowest levels, and it's very interesting, and I love what I do, so. And in addition to that, you're a softball coach. I do, you're I coach heavily softball. invested in the lives of many uh, students in the Putnam County area. Absolutely. Very yes. cool. Yes. So Brian, what have the two of you been doing for the past 15 years? Well, funny you should ask. Uh, in 2001, God has brought us back to Florida. Let me stop real quick and, and just brag on my wife because my wife is my best friend and I love her more than life itself. But she won't tell you this, but when God called her to be a teacher about eight years ago, uh, in the last six years, she's got her bachelor's degree and about two weeks ago just finished her master's degree. That's and, awesome. Uh, as amazingly hard worker and uh, Very I'm cool. so proud of her. Very and cool. uh, God is using her to do some neat stuff in, in, in Crescent City at Crescent City High School. Uh, but when God brought us back to Florida in 2001, we were student pastors. We were working with students and student, we love students. And uh, that's all I ever wanted to do in, student, in, in ministry. 
Um, I think being a student pastor is the greatest gig on planet Earth because you get to hang out with students and do what they love to do and all that stuff. But God had some different plans. Long story short, um, he called us to the southern end of Putnam County, which is about 40 miles west of here, if you're not sure where Putnam County is at. And uh, we planted a brand new church for two groups of people, um, the unchurched, people who are far from God, and another group of people that I call the de-churched, people who had walked away from church at some point in time. So for the last 15 years, we've had our pastor's hats on and uh, we've been pastoring people over in Putnam County in a totally different context from Flagler County and Epic Church. But we're so excited that, um, that God has brought us here and uh, we believe the best is yet to come. And uh, we're just gonna step into it with everything we got and, and do, do what we do. So why in the world would you leave that as a lead pastor to come join a team here at Epic? Yeah, you, you said it best a moment ago, and I love your illustration. Uh, the command that Jesus gave us was go. He said go. And um, sometimes uh, it's easy to get uh, settled, like you said a moment ago. It's easy to get kind of in a rut, so to speak, and happy with where we're at. And sometimes God's just got to shake us a little bit and get us out of our comfort zone. And I'll be honest with you, God's doing that in our life uh, because we have been very comfortable over the last uh, 15 years doing what we do. Um, but uh, God said, go. And uh, as much as I love um, the church that I pastored and the community that we still live in for right now for a season, I love Jesus more. And I wanna go where he wants me to go and do what he wants me to do and use my gifts and my talents and my abilities uh, to serve him. Well, we are so incredibly grateful that you guys joined our team. And let me tell you a little bit more about them. So last, uh, let's see, it was September the 8th that you celebrated 15 years That's correct. at your church. Mm -hmm. And then the following Sunday, they came and celebrated 10 years with us. So last Sunday was actually their first day on staff. And uh, I just like to say they must be party people because they leave a party right. and go to a party. So <laughs> like, right. we are just grateful to have them on our team. Brian, tell us a little bit about what you're going to be involved in here. Well, what's really important to me um, is, is who Epic says um, you are is who you really are. And the values that you see posted all over the walls and on paper and on our website and that kind of thing is really lived out. And uh, that's a huge testimony to Epic Church and who you guys are and who we are um, in our community. So we believe that people matter. And you talked about last week about the need and, and the kind of the vision that God's given you um, to start a care ministry and a care network to help people uh, right where they're at in life and to help people kind of take next steps in their walk um, with Jesus. So um, I'm going to do my best to kind of come alongside and help in whatever way I can. Uh, to help get that care network established where we can love on people and serve on people, serve people and, and uh, help them take next steps towards Jesus and help them to know that, that they matter to God. Um, one of the other values that's really important to us is that authentic community matters. Uh, another way to say that is that authentic relationships matter. And if you really stop and think about life, life is all about relationships. And, and we believe we're better together than we are by ourselves. Um, Tim talked about community groups that are starting and we're going to be hanging out at the community groups table and I'll be helping out with that. And uh, just really encourage anybody who's not connected in a community group, or you're not on a serving team, that you get plugged in and get connected. And we'd love to help you understand um, how you can do that as well. And then the third value that I really get fired up about and watching that video about 3G Sunday was really exciting to me because I love to serve. Serving is my dominant spiritual gift. And, and I'm so grateful that God gave me that gift. Um, but we believe serving others matters. And uh, it's part of that going. Right. Um, so I'll be helping out with those three areas of ministry. And um, I don't have it all figured out. I promise you, I'm on a journey just like everybody else. Um, but we'd love to meet you. We'd love to get to know you. And so we'll be hanging out um, at the small groups table next to the Connection Center after uh, our service today. And we just love for you to stop by and say hello. I promise you, I probably won't remember your name. All right, next Sunday, but I'll do my best. And as time goes by, uh, we'll get to know some of you guys at a deeper level. And we're excited about that. 
Well, Brian's being real humble, but let me just tell you, we have learned a lot from them over the past 15 years of what they have been doing. And Brian's been a good friend to me for the past 10 years. And so he has helped me understand a lot of of what it means to to be a pastor in ministry. And we do a lot of what we do based upon what I've learned from Brian and Karen. So uh, again, grateful to have them come and be a part of our team. So you guys, thanks for coming up and doing this. We'll do it two more times today. How about that? Got it. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys. Okay, another thing that we're doing to go after people in our community for Christ is we're trying to establish a permanent home for us as a church. And if you were not here last week, I made that big announcement. So I made the announcement that we've just signed a contract to buy a a piece of property on the State Road 100 corridor. And I wanna show you a picture of where that's at. So so just so you get bearings for that, we've got Beltair here, you've got the high school, you've got the airport, you've got the hospital, you've got 95, and then just Just around the corner on Seminole Woods Parkway, um, there's a piece of property here, 16 acres, 12 of it's buildable. And we think that this is a a prime piece of property in an area that is is starting to expand and grow. And this is a a part of the the, part of our county that is at the crossroads uh, that helps uh, connect Flagler Beach with Bunnell and north of Flagler County with south of Flagler County, as well as St. Augustine and Ormond Beach. And we truly believe that most people can get to this piece of property within about 20, 25 minutes throughout our community. And uh, we think this is a very accessible piece of property and it's got a lot of options for us uh, for building and growing. So here's some of the deeper details I wanted to share with you today. So uh, most of you are curious about the price and the price is $650,000, okay? Now, and when I say that, here's what I know happens in some minds. There are some of you that go, wow, that's a lot of money. Others of you go, well, that's not a lot of money for that piece of property. So here's what we feel like as a leadership of our church. We feel like that's not a lot of money for a piece of land in that location that, that's lar- that is that large and is that accessible to our community. And here's what we've wanted from the beginning of our church is for us to find a home where people wouldn't have to come looking for us, but they could find us easily that we would be in a prime part of our community where people would come past and find us quickly. Um, God has blessed us on our journey with that. So when we started at the Realty Building, that building was kind of like that. We were on a main part of the road that people drove past. And when God moved us here, the same thing happened. We were on a main road where people drive past. And on Seminole Woods Parkway, about 10,000 cars go up and down that, car, that road every day. And it's, again, very close to the hospital, the airport, and easy to direct people towards. I was reminded of the importance of location this past week when I had a conversation with a guy in our community who was trying to get the word out about his new business. So I was in one of our parking lots, one of our shopping centers in town. I was getting out of my car and I was going into a store and a guy came running across the parking lot and said, hey, sir, uh, can I tell you about my new business? And he had a stack of cards in his hands and it reminded me of 10 years ago when a number of us were running through parking lots and handing out flyers about our church, inviting people to come. And so I stopped and like, yeah, man, tell me about your business. So I took his flyer and he told me about his business. And he was so excited. And he, I said, well, where is it? And he said, well, you go down here and you go around there and then you go to the other side. You know where those two things are? It's not there, but it's over here. And I said, uh, not sure where that is. Can you say it again? So he said it again. He go down here, around there. It's not by those two things, but it's past that. And you know what I'm talking about? And honestly, I said, no, like, I, I don't know where you're talking about. And when it comes to us helping people find us as a church, we don't wanna spend a lot of time trying to help people find a place that nobody can find. We wanna be able to say, you know the light past the hospital? Just take a left right there and then you'll find us. You know where Panera is? We're right around the corner. You know where the, the airport is? Right around the corner from that. You know where Tom Gibbs Chevrolet is? Right around the corner from that. So again, we feel like this is a great price at a great location. And uh, here's how this kind of unfolded. Their asking price for this property was $1.2 million. Our offering price was zero, (laughs) literally. We went and met with them and we had a a big um, brochure that we put together of, of explaining who we are and what we're doing, what we've done and what we plan to do in our community. And at the end of that, I said, listen, this is the craziest thing ever. I know you're business leaders. I know you didn't become business leaders because of making decisions like this, but I'm asking for you to prayerfully consider donating this land. It was as quiet as it is right now in that meeting. It was just kind of like that. They were like, 
And they decided that uh, that was not the decision that they were gonna make. <laughs> so we continued the negotiation process and ended on that price at $650,000, which again, we think is a great price. Now here's some really cool stuff. We already have $75,000 towards our down payment so we have a down payment that is due, $125,000 is due at the end of our due diligence period, which is at 45 days. And so um, in the real near future, we'll have to put down $125,000. We have 75,000 of that already. Uh, one person or one family gave $10,000. Another person, another family gave $50,000. And there've been a whole lot of people who've just been given on a regular basis for the past year and whether you gave $10,000, $50,000, or $100, or five cents, all of it matters. All of it goes together. All of it helps us reach the goal of us establishing a permanent home for us as a church. So here's what I ask if you call this your church home. I ask you to start praying and ask God what he might want you to give towards this. Don't worry about what somebody else has given. Just ask God what he wants you to give. And the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And so you determine what you can give cheerfully and you respond and give that. And if you can give over the next few weeks to help make our down payment, great. Uh, many people might need some more time, might need several months to possibly get to some resources that they could give. Um, however, uh, that applies to you. You again, do what you sense God wants you to do. We have until April to close on this property. So it's about seven and a half months from now. So we have till April to close. Um, here's the, the thing though. If we do not close in April, we lose $125,000. We lose our down payment. We do not want that to happen. And we would prefer not to take out a loan. And we truly believe if we come together as a church and respond based upon what God is asking us to do, God will help us meet this goal. Now, let me explain some things that many people don't understand about church finances. Everything that we do as a church is supported financially by those who give. We aren't part of a, a big denomination. We aren't part of a group that gets money from Rome. Uh, we actually are a part of a, a church uh, where we are independent. We're, we're a group of people who are supported by those who give here at our church. And that's actually part of God's plan for all local churches. God's plan found throughout scripture for local churches to do the ministry he's called them to do involves two things, tithes and offerings. So tithing is the spiritual practice of giving 10% of our income back to God through a local church. And then special offerings is in addition to that where we give based upon us feeling like God wants us to do that. It's uh, a moment where maybe there's a special project like, like us pursuing this land. And as we feel led, we give that. So tithes and offerings is God's plan for each church to fulfill the mission that God has for them. And if you currently do that, if you currently give here, I just wanna say thank you for doing that. Like it really matters. Like when you give, you help us to create an environment here where people can come in and learn the teachings of Jesus and be transformed by those teachings. And you have helped over 600 people meet Jesus over the past 10 years. You play a part, whether you gave five cents or you gave $50,000, you play a part in somebody finding Jesus for all of eternity, that matters. You play a part in us helping to create a children's ministry and student ministries where children and students can build a faith of their own at critical moments in their lives. You help our community understand that God is for them and so are we. You're helping people in Guatemala and Ukraine know that God has not forgotten about them. And we've actually had our partners in those parts of the world say that to us. Thank you for coming because it reminds us that God has not forgotten about us. You help us hire staff that can help us reach even more people for Christ. So if you give, thank you for doing that. And if you are a Christ follower and if this is your church home and if you haven't started giving yet, I invite you to do that. I invite you to, to join the, the great adventure of trusting God with your finances and see what God says in Malachi chapter three, that when we trust him with our finances, specifically when we tithe, we'll watch God open the windows of heaven and bless our lives in abundance to the point that we can't handle it, that we can't take it all in. 
And I gotta tell you, I, I have I've tested God in this and many of you have and you've seen that God fulfills his promises. And so if you're in a spot where you haven't done that yet, I just encourage you, take that leap of faith. And I actually invite you to take our tithe challenge. So here's our tithe challenge. I encourage you to start tithing over the next three months and see what God does in your life. And if you find at the end of three months that tithing is not sustainable for you, here's the deal we'll make you. We'll give you back 100% of the money that you gave in that three month time period. Um, this is not a marketing strategy. This is not a you know, get rich quick scheme. Uh, this is not a way for me to reel you in and get you hooked. Like, I, I just think if you take a step and try this, I think God will fulfill his promise. But if you find that he doesn't, we will not ask any questions. If you say, hey, can I have you know, my money back? Um, you do need to ask for your money back. Don't ask for somebody else's money back because you know, that, that'll make it a little bit more complicated. Um, but listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 6, He said, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and God will give us everything that we need. Here's what God teaches in scripture. God can do more with 90% of your income than you and I can do with 100%. It makes no sense at all. And if you're on that spot of being scared, I get it. I was there. I understand it. And the only way to see God fulfill that promise is to take a leap of faith. And so I invite you to do that. For those who give regularly here, here's something I ask you not to do. I ask you not to take your tithe money or your regular money that you give and to give that to the land fund that will help the land fund and that will hurt all the regular ministries that we do on a regular basis. So again, this is a special offering that we're taking for our land and we're asking you to ask God what that is for you and whatever that is, don't worry about somebody else. You just ask God what that is for you and you respond accordingly to what he says. We're gonna give you some updates on this over the next few months to let us know where we're at in the process and excited to see how God is gonna guide us through this journey. And if you would, when you label your gift, just label it Land Fund and we'll, we'll know where it's gonna go. Now, as we close today, our worship team is gonna close us in a song called Yes, I Will. And as we sing this song together, what I ask that all of us do is I ask that, like if you're part of this church family, like if you're a Christ follower, I ask that you determine today as we're singing, it's like, yes, I'm gonna do whatever God asked me to do to go reach as many people for him as possible. Like I'm gonna leave this, this water station here and I'm gonna go out into our community. I'm gonna find people in our community who desperately need Jesus and I'm gonna find ways to invite them into a personal relationship with him. I'm gonna find ways to invite them to our church family where they can experience for themselves what it's like to hear the teachings of Jesus and be filled up with him and transformed by him. Let me tell you how you can do that this week. So next Sunday, we're starting a new series called Alexa. And it's based on uh, some of the top questions that people are asking on the internet about faith. And so we're gonna deal with some big questions out there. Next week, we're gonna start by dealing with the question, what is God like? There are many people out there that are saying like, what is God like? I'm not really sure if he exists, but if he does exist, what's he like? Because a lot of people think he's just an angry God up in heaven. And they don't understand who he really is. And they need to understand that. So if you know somebody in our community that doesn't know who God is like, invite them to come next week where we're gonna be talking about that. And then we'll be able to talk about what's happening in this series, next questions that we have. And you might know somebody else who has that question and can come and be a part of that. So if you would stand with me, we're gonna sing together. And as we sing, uh, I ask, let's just determine as a church family that we're gonna do whatever God asks of us to reach as many people in our community for him as possible. So let's pray together. Lord, again, I'm so incredibly grateful to be a part of a church family that, that just obeys your call to go. And Jesus, you've called us to go. All throughout scripture, we see that go command that we're not supposed to stay in our nice, comfortable little circles, but we're supposed to leave. We're supposed to go out and reach more people who have never experienced Jesus and the life-giving water that he has to offer. 
And so, Lord, we've got some opportunities to do that, opportunities through serving, opportunities to, to hire more staff and partner with that staff as we create and, and more fully establish more ministry opportunities as we reach out and um, try to establish a permanent home for us where we can drive a stake in the ground that says, God is for you, Flagler County, and so are we. So God, we need a, a lot of help to pull this off. And we're praying Ephesians 3.20 that you would do infinitely more than we can ask or think. And so Lord, when it comes to, to us purchasing this land, I just pray that you would start communicating to us what, what you want us to give. We wouldn't worry about what somebody else has given. We wouldn't worry about what you're saying to somebody else. We'd just worry about what you're saying to us and we'd be obedient in doing that. So we're excited for the future and excited for what this means for us as a church family to have a place of our own where we can be like a lighthouse, shining a light in a dark community who desperately need to see the light of Jesus and be transformed by that light. So Lord, we're just determining to say today, yes, yes, we will do whatever you ask. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and, and being here and worshiping God with us today. We, we're praying for you. We love you. And we look forward to seeing each one of you back here next week. So God bless you. Have a great week.